should have got that one on. on oh, I just got it a little bit. All right, I'm ready. Sort of. I mean, I might just have this going as well. Right. Let me switch over to not NASCAR. Hey, do you have Luke Keekley written down on it? I do. All right, good, because I have it too, but I don't have any stats. I don't have stats. That's whatever. Oh, if I have my phone, but yeah. All right. All right. Go for a recording. Oh, oh, what's the phone then? Hmm? Can I get the phone? Just in, in case. case. Just in case. Just in case the GoPro stops. Yeah. All right. You want to start? Yep. Sure. Cool. Cool. You ready? I am ready. Sweet. All right. You want me to do the intro? You can do the intro. All right. You remember the name of the episode? Episode <laughs> <laughs> <a> five. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Sports Commute. I'm Dan, here with Matt, yes, and uh, one of our two guests tonight, uh, Adam Jackson, also known as uh, Five Point Vids. <laughs> right. A so, uh, what, well, let's just start off with the playoffs this week, since it just went by. As we had the Niners beat the Vikings 27-10, to the Titans, unexpectedly, I... No clue about this game. 28 to 12. Mm -hmm. The Chiefs beat the Texans in a very good comeback game, 51 to 31. And the Packers, 28 to 23, Seattle. Let me put it this way for the uh, for the Chiefs game. Yeah. The first half was good. The first half was great. The Texans were blowing them out. And then they didn't. They didn't do anything. And then they just. Uh, yeah, they didn't do anything. So. Touch up, touch up, touch up. All right. <clears throat> yeah, and then I just got some predictions on. Next week. All or right, this well, week. Uh, we can circle back around okay. to that. All right, uh, we'll start out with uh, Carolina here. Uh, Luke Keekley is retiring after his eighth season in the NFL. Uh, he was with Carolina with all of them, right? Yes. So, yeah, uh, eight seasons in Carolina. Uh, no rings, thanks to Cam. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't research anything on I him. I really didn't. I just knew he was 28 and he was young. So. Have a career. There you go. Um, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, that covers it. Just crossed out. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you know what? I need to. I forgot to do this last episode, so. Uh, Matt, Deion Dawkins has a little message for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Deion Dawkins, after after the loss to uh to Texans. to the Texans in the wild card round, sent out a letter uh to all Bills fans. Um like myself and Matt. Uh, let me just pull up the letter real quick. I should have done this beforehand. But oh, I had something. Yeah, I had something for later. Dion Dawkins. That's a thing? I didn't even see it. No, oh, it's, it's it a legitimate oh, thing. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So, uh, it's a letter to the Bills Mafia. Uh, this was put out on uh, last Friday, actually, and we should have covered it last episode, but I forgot. <laughs> Uh, it starts out, Dear, uh, Dear Bills Mafia, a.k.a. literally all the names, um, Dion Dawkins here, a.k.a. Dion from the O-line, we'll go from there. Uh, first things first, and it's a pretty serious issue, it's an epidemic sweeping across America. It's called people wanting to jump on the Bills bandwagon. <laughs> For real, talk to your loved ones about it, here are the symptoms. You see someone's getting very bored with their current football team, they're not, they're just not vibing with it like they used to. And on the other hand, they look like they look and see what's happening in Buffalo with Bills Nation. They see a team on the rise with an exciting core of young studs, two playoff bursts in the last three seasons, and the best fans that ever lived. Those people. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> I'm trying to fix the damn camera. And this is where it gets dangerous. Those people think to themselves, man, I need to get on this Bills bandwagon for next year. I need to become a Bills fan. And they try to jump on. And I have a very imp important message for those people. And that includes you. Shut up. That includes you. Okay. You knew this from last year. Do not, I repeat, do not attempt to access the Bills bandwagon at this time. We are currently at capacity. So, so Matt, Deion Dawkins doesn't accept you. That's great for him, though. So. <laughs> Good for him. Anyhow. Oh, well, you still bring out all your uh, Bengals stuff. I literally brought out a helmet because we were talking about someone. Oh, 
that's you not good. All right. Oh, uh, we got a lot of go. hirings and random stuff. The Browns hire the Vikings offensive coordinator, Stefanski. I don't, I really didn't see much about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Brady from LSU, who recently just won a national title, was hired by Carolina. Jason Garrett was interviewed by Giants. I, for the offensive coordinator, I didn't see a single thing about it. <laughs> and then we got Bill Cowher and Jimmy Johnson in the Hall of Fame introduction. I saw that. That's great. And we got some <laughs> very interesting things. Uh, Julian Edelman was arrested after jumping on a hood of a Mercedes this week. And then the OBJ LSU game scandal when well, he slapped the ass of a yeah. <laughs> security guard and gave out money, which yeah, so. I... So yeah. the way the way the warrant has been written for uh, for Odell Beckham Jr. was a uh, New Orleans uh, Police Department has issued a warrant for Odell Beckham Jr. under the charge of uh, simple battery. What? Uh, yeah, it's it's Are it's labeled kidding? simple battery. Wow. Uh, the charge is brought up as an incident uh, after the NCAA football championship game. Uh, Odell was seen in a video in LSU's locker room of, um, as a Superdome officer was addressing. LSU players, uh, Odell decided to come up behind him and uh, you know so give give him a little ass tap, <laughs> and uh, I guess that's enough for simple battery. So. <laughs> uh, as far as we know, uh, the Browns are well aware of this situation. Oh, They're uh -huh. cooperate, or he's making sure that Odell's cooperating with uh, with the authorities to try and take the necessary measures. Yep. So that's being taken care of. That's it. Cool. Great. Uh, well, up, yeah, and then I Hold just. On. One second, guys. Got it. Right. While he's gone, I'll continue on my thing. So I had the uh, big free agents of the 2020. There's a lot. I didn't even realize. I'm like, hmm, seems like five guys. They ain't, they ain't nothing. No, 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 no. Tom Brady. Philip Rivers, Drew Brees, Ryan Tannehill, Teddy Bridgewater, Jason Peters, Austin Hooper, James Winston, Jadavian Clowney, AJ Green, Dak, Amari Cooper, Dead Boys, oh, Chris no. Jones, Byron Jones, Dead Boys, Derrick Henry, <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald, Kyle Van Noy, Gerald McCoy, uh, Nam Kinsu, and there's tons of more. What do you what do you what do you got in there? I don't know, you went through them that fast. Let me see. I just put on a shit ton. So what's this? Uh, the big free agents of twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's gonna get re-signed. Uh, Brady's already gonna stay. Who's in... he? Who's he? Breeze is, Breeze is staying in New Orleans. That's we know that for sure. Brady's staying in New England. That's been confirmed by Brady himself. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Shut up. <laughs> we I can bring up the statement again if you want me. That to wasn't it. for no. Uh, Philip Rivers, I don't know, I don't think they're gonna re-sign him, he's not, uh... Oh, is Joe here? No. Oh, <laughs> pizza time. Uh, Philip Rivers, I don't know if he's gonna get re-signed, I mean... Couldn't tell you, he's he hasn't been, he hasn't been doing the great... He went straight down, probably from the sense of starting. Uh, nah, I'm just... Some of these guys, like, I starred Dak and Cooper, because I feel like they're probably gonna get extended, or if they try to leave, they're gonna get franchise tag. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, there's three guys right here on the Cowboys. You got Jadavian Clowney as a free agent here. Big, rough, big pass rusher. He's going to stay in Seattle. Okay. Yeah, he's going to stay in Seattle. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, who else is going to take him. Someone's going to throw something at him. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Larry Fitz, I believe, was re I know he he's has, coming he back. He has been he resigned, resigned. yeah. Uh, this is this is from Monday, I believe. Yep. I wrote uh, most of this. Teddy Bridgewater will probably go, go to free agency. Maybe I don't see him making a return to New Orleans. With Taysom Hill? With Taysom Hill. No. Absolutely not. I think all three of them were on free agency, I believe. Yeah. So, I believe they're going to sign Breeze and Taysom Hill. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Derrick Henry's obviously staying in Tennessee. Are you kidding me? Well, I just threw that on there. I saw him. I'm like, oh, I didn't think it was. He's literally, like, what? About a few years in the league? Four. Four? Jeez, I have no idea. Um, no idea. Janus Winston. <laughs> talked about Jameis Winston before. Very, times. very... It's it's time. an interesting situation uh, as uh, Chisel Adonis, our, our previous guest, spoke yes. about. Uh, yes. It's, it's a very odd uh, situation because he'll still drop a couple touchdowns and throw a few more interceptions. 
He's, he went 30 for 30, perfectly balanced. Did he actually go 30 for 30? He went 30 for 30, perfectly balanced. What are you uh, What are you thinking on the uh, Jameson Winston situation here? Uh, I, you know, with Jameis, the easiest way to start a fight is to go down to South Florida and just say that Jameis is average to below average. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear, in Tampa, anyone that went to Florida, they he is just a god. And what I see is a reckless quarterback that doesn't really care about protecting the ball, you know. Like, All right, I'm, I'm going to make this throw because I'm a gunslinger. And, and it, it, it just doesn't have that extra layer of thought before he throws it. And that's going to it's gonna hurt him. He's got a, an amazing arm. And yeah. he's also not a dumb quarterback. He's actually quite his, – his football IQ is high, but – just mentally, he does not no. pass as well. So I, I don't know. I think Tampa moves on from him. Honestly, I don't. I don't think I see they see him as a long-term asset, especially with all these quarterbacks coming out. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it's it's probably his time is over there. That could be a good one for uh, for Tua to end up in. Oh, mm -hmm. I forgot about Tua completely. Yeah. Well, he's kind of been out of the question for a while since he got injured. And yeah. yeah, so we'll just have to see when April swings around. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Did you go over Carolina and uh, Ben McAdoo? No, I didn't even hear about this. All right. Uh, yeah, I think it came out today. So, uh, the, Jags the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are searching for an offensive coordinator, uh, have decided to interview former head coach of the New York Giants, uh, Ben McAdoo, as a possibility. Hmm. Uh, this interview came about soon after um, he finished up his interview with the Carolina Panthers for uh, a position on their coaching staff. I, no, no, no. Uh, honestly, I don't see him making it too far with the Jags. They're... It's it's kind of an interesting situation. They're 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 a great team. They are. They, they can are, be great. They're well, a great they team. went to the, what division champ AFC championship two years ago. Conference, I think, because they face the Patriots next week after beating the Bills. No, they beat the Bills and then they played the Steelers. I remember that game because I watched right. it on my yeah. phone. Then they made it. To then they made it to the Patriots and yeah. almost beat the Patriots. Um. Wait, that wouldn't make sense. Well, they almost in the championship. No, that wouldn't make sense because of. They started in the wild card. Yeah. Went to play the Steelers. Beat uh -huh. the Steelers. Went to the final round. No, three rounds to the play. Because <laughs> uh, oh wait, that was last year. My bad. I'm thinking wrong. I was thinking, I was thinking they were playing the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. No, they played the Pats. Yeah. All the right. Chiefs didn't even make the playoffs that year. I don't believe. Yep. Uh, but I don't see McAdoo going that far in the Jacksonville uh, uh, coaching position. He was a great offensive coordinator. Uh, turned around the New York Giants. Uh, uh, program, and then when they moved him up to a head coaching position, kind of fell out and didn't end up so well, but as of right now, um, Tom Coughlin, also a former member of the New York Giants, is running, he's uh, running, he's the head coach. No, he's not. What? No. He got fired? No, he just retired or whatever. Um, he's running advisement for, uh, oh, for the new oh, head coach. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? I just they're having him consult. Oh, oh yeah, that one. Consult, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Big words. All right, well, that does it for that one. Uh, all right, let me see what else I got here. Got one more thing for the NFL. I'm just scrambling around for notes. Oh, I got the big one here. Um, <laughs> so, Joe Burrow's dad, not I originally it was reported as Joe Burrow, but it's actually his dad, uh, has come out and said that his son would be happy to play. Uh, and, Happy. <laughs> and turn around uh, the help of the hopeless Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals uh, program. Uh, his father, Jimmy Burrow, was also quoted saying, my son wouldn't be concerned with the Bengals history, such as no playoff win <laughs> since 1991. Uh, but, I mean, sure. we already know they're going to draft him, so we'll see what happens. He's got, what, A.J. Green? Uh-oh. Uh, well, actually, I don't know about A.J. Green. Oh, uh, Tyler Boyd. He's still there. Boyd. Yeah, he's going to be there. You're the Bengals fan, you know. I understand that. <laughs> it's Tyler Boyd, Alex Erickson, uh, Auden Tate, uh, 
Tyler Eifert, and some other guys. John Ross, that's him. Yeah, I think he'll like John Ross, to be honest. If he's throwing a Thaddeus Moss or whatever his name was, he mm -hmm. looks. Yeah. You know, I could see him being a good fit in uh, Cincinnati. Um, if they get receivers. He well, didn't, he didn't grow up too far away from he, Cincinnati. Well, yeah, he, he went to Ohio State. He went to uh, Athens High School. Did in he? Ohio. Really? So I didn't know that. He's a... Let me see if I can fix this. He's a... Uh, so he's not doing too too bad at all. No, no, no. So I think that's a good... I think that'll be a good fit, fit, fit for him. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... You got anything else? I just have the team. I got some stuff, but yeah, you can go ahead with that. Why not? Let's, let's go on. So last week I did the top ten or I did the top ten drivers of the decade. Mm -hmm. It was top ten drivers of the decade for the NASCAR. This week I got the ten best NFL teams of the decade. Off of record, isn't it? Off of record and other things you'll see. The Niners, who were 80, 79, and 1, which is about 50%. Five and three in postseason, three division titles, and one Super Bowl appearance. The Eagles, who were 87, 73 and 0, 54 percent above, four and three postseason record, four divisional titles, and one Super Bowl win. That was against Tom Brady. The Chiefs, 96 and 64, which is about 60 percent, two and six postseason record, and five divisional titles. That's recent. Uh, the Broncos, who are 89, 71, and 0, which is a 55 right, percent, 6 and 4 in postseason, 5 divisional titles, 1 Super Bowl win, and 1 Super Bowl loss. The Saints, 160, 62 percent, 4 and 5 in the postseason, 4 divisional titles, no Super Bowls. I was actually lost in that. I'm like, wait, didn't they? No, no it they didn't. It was 2009. Uh, that's, where, that's where your stats get a little hazy there. What? Steelers? It's not a Super Bowl appearance. It's a Super Bowl win. No, they didn't. They actually won in 2009. Or 2000. I was about to say, it could be 2009 because that's when the Saints, uh, no, the Saints no, no. played the Colts. They played the Cardinals that year. 2000. Or that, that they, um, I think they won it in 10. But that was the 09 season. Mm. And I think they won it in 2009. They started that. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't tell. You. Well, hundred. Yeah, whatever. 102 and 57 were the Steelers and won 64 percent. Five and six in postseason record. Four divisional titles and one Super Bowl appearance. That was against the Packers. Oh, in 2000. That whatever. One. That was when Aaron Rodgers came out and shined. Yep. Ravens 98, 62 and 0, 61 percent. Seven and four postseason record. Four divisional titles and one Super Bowl win against the Niners. The Packers at third, 102 and 56, and two ties. I didn't think they tied that much. 64 percent, nine and six postseason record, six divisional titles, and one Super Bowl win against the Steelers. The Seahawks, 159 and one, is 62 percent, almost 63, nine and six postseason record, four divisional titles, one Super Bowl win, and one Super Bowl loss. Then. Who could you guess? The Patriots, which 125 wins, 35 losses, and zero ties. 78% win rate. Damn. 16-6 postseason record, 10 divisional titles, 3 Super Bowl wins, and 2 Super Bowl losses. I love how you're a little salty on the last two. You don't say appearances like the rest of them. You say I, losses. I, you know, you know, well, it's whatever. All right. Cool that. Um... So, I'm gonna ask both of you and see if you can figure out what this uh, what they have in common here. Okay. What do Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders have in common? The Hall of Famers? Well, or Bo was. Jackson got Hall of Famer. Really? I thought he was. He didn't play. Uh, the careers ended early. Well, that's true, but it's also not what I'm trying to go for. Oh. Um. As opposed to running back. Uh, close, but no, they were, uh, they were, well, yes, also, but, yes. uh, yeah. they sure. both also played baseball and football, oh. uh, in their professional lives. Oh, okay. And there's a third athlete trying to, uh, trying to join their, uh, their status as, as multiple, well, actually, fourth, because Russell Wilson did it with the Rangers. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I forgot about Russell Wilson. Um, I totally forgot. Kyler Murray's looking at joining, uh, 
or playing baseball and football at the same time. At least further down the line of his career, not wow. right now. Wow. Um, and if you think back to 2018, the uh, the Athletics drafted him uh, mm-hmm. ninth was, overall. Yeah, was yep, nine. ninth overall, which means they still have the uh, right the rights to, to his MLB career. Yeah. So if you yeah. ever if you ever would want to uh, come back and I don't know, was he a pitcher in college? He's a, he's a quarterback. So yeah, he's a pitcher in college. Uh, he could probably come back, play a play a couple games for. Uh, I guess I don't yeah. know. I mean, it does kind of work out with the NFL as well, just because like if he's uh, if he's a pitcher, he's not gonna play every every game. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Do that. That's gone. <laughs> is that all we have for the NFL? Or is it... Nope. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this will be the last thing besides your predictions for this week. Yep. All right. So, um, in Kansas City this week for the AFC uh, Championship against the Titans, Chris Jones, their uh, their defensive tackle, still not practicing yet, uh, even though we're just two days away from the game. Uh, and we're not sure if he is going to be active. Uh, my guess is no, they won't activate him. Uh, also, similarly for the Chiefs, um, Travis Kelsey hasn't practiced the last two days. Ooh. However, uh, he'll be playing. He's been. He's already going to be playing. Um, you know, but I think that is going to be a huge blow losing Chris Jones. Absolutely. Especially well, I, with trying to stop Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, a rough one for the Chiefs. They got to fire on all cylinders and come make up for the injuries they uh, they lost. Yeah. yeah you got anything? No, I really don't. I didn't really look at the injuries this week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got. All right. And then I got the predictions for the championships. So I got the Niners over the Packers, 32-30. to 30. What do you have? Uh, are they playing in San Francisco? Yep. Mm. Mm. It's going to be a tough one. See, that's why I was also having an issue. I'm like, oh, dang. I think Gucci Garoff has a shining moment coming Gucci up against the Packers. I say it'll go to overtime though. Oh, I'm gonna sure. say it'll be uh, twenty-four seventeen. Touchdown round. Mm-hmm. Touchdown. Yeah. Technically twenty-three, but they don't kick the extra point. Oh, they don't kick it. Whatever, man. Anyhow, uh, what do you got for uh, for the uh, NFC Championship? Uh, I think it's an easy one. I think that uh, San Francisco outplays Green Bay mm-hmm. pretty easily. I'd say 28-14, something like that, double them up. Wow. I don't really have much faith in the Packers being able to go on the road and put up enough points against the Niners who are playing really good defense. So mm-hmm. I think that's an easy one to call. Absolutely. I'm always wrong, so <laughs> don't, don't put any I, I weight on Most of the time we're wrong. Yeah, we're, most, we're mostly wrong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I got for the AFC Championship, the Titans over the Chiefs, 40-36. to 36. That's in Kansas City. I don't know. I, I, I can't. I, I, I doubted them once, and I said they were going to get blown the hell out by the Ravens. But I I can't. They can't stop Derrick Henry. Well, the only reason I say I don't think your score is right. Why? I because like right now there's there's a huge downpour in, uh, in Great. Kansas that means City. they're going to run the ball more. And then the Kansas City can't throw the ball. Are they playing Kansas or Missouri? It's, it's Kansas City, Missouri. It's the same city. Daily. Sunday. Oh, Sunday's actually supposed to be pretty clear, but it's supposed to rain the rest of the week out. That's fine. So, I'm... Oh, are you kidding me? Well... <laughs> What'd you fucking do, you bum? I don't know, I clicked back, but I guess, uh... Okay, that'll just be on the video. Yeah, whatever. Save it. Save it and keep her going. Yep. You bum, don't do it Not yet. Alright. Start again. All right, we're back. Welcome back to that fuck up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so I don't know how much that cut. We'll go over the Titans again. Uh, you got 40-36. All right, well, we got a big uh, big rainstorm rolling through the Midwest, through Kansas City right now. So uh, I'm going to say it'll be close just because Tennessee's defense is doing pretty well and Kansas City can, uh, can't do yeah. can't do much to stop the run against Henry without Chris Jones there. Oh, Henry. So, I'm going to say, um, you know what, I'll go 24, uh, or not 24, 28, uh, 21. Who? 
Yeah, one score. I said who? Who do you got winning? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, t- uh, Tennessee. Buffalo. Buffalo. All right, cool. How's about you, uh, Mr. Jackson? Uh, I, I like the Titans a lot. I just like the way that they're playing. They remind me of both the 2008 and 2012 Giants. Like, oh, yeah. they're just they're coming to play, and they are coming to play on Sunday. And I think that, once again, Andy Reid has a golden opportunity to go to the Super Bowl, and it's going to slip right through his hands. But I just don't see anyone being able to stop Derrick Henry, and that's how you keep the offense off the field, is controlling the ball. Ryan Tannehill is going to make plays on Sunday. He is not going to be shook, and they are not going to pressure him. And it's going to be, I mean, I don't think it's going to be an ass whipping, but it's like, I, I see like an ugly 26 to 21 nail biting affair where, especially if Tennessee gets out in front, because if they, if, I tell you, if Casey comes out flat like they did against Houston and they spot Tennessee 24 points, there won't be a they're comeback. They're freaking done. <laughs> like, there's no comeback there, there's no matchup advantage there. Um, so I think, yeah, 26-21, Titans all the way. All right. Good. Yeah. Um, pretty much covers the MLB. You got anything for the NBA this week? I do. Oh, uh, well, I actually have a lot of basketball for some odd reason. All right. So, uh, where is it? I just have the standings and the all-star. But interesting this week in college basketball, we had one, two, three, five upsets. Clemson beat number three Duke, 79-72. Wisconsin beat number 17 Maryland 56 to 54. South Carolina beats Kentucky number 10 81 78. Bama beats Auburn number 4 83 to 64. And Washington State beats Oregon or uh, God damn it number 8 62 to 8 72 to 61. See the thing. The thing that I have is like um, I don't think Auburn should have been ranked number four at all. I really don't. S- no, SEC no. is a football conference. Yeah. You don't hear anything about their foot about their basketball. No, you teams. don't. The last time I heard about any SEC basketball team was when Alabama had that big fight and only three players could finish the game. Uh-huh. That was it. That, that's all I remember. Uh, Auburn was a bad foul away from Duke. Like I just want to put that. Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> I had no clue. I'm not the basketball yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm not. A, I don't watch college basketball. I just saw there's a crap ton of upsets. But uh, in the NBA, we got the uh, in the East we have the Bucks on top, seventy on top. Celtics seven and a half games behind. The Heat eight and a half games behind. The Raptors nine and a half games behind. The Pacers are ten games behind. The 76ers are 10 and a half games behind. Magic is 16 and a half games behind. The Nets, 17 and a half games behind. Okay, that's all I got for the East. For the West, the Lakers are top 33 and 8. Nuggets behind 4 and a half. Clippers behind 4 and a half. The Jazz behind 5. Rockets, 6 and a half back. The Mavs, 7 back. OKC, 10 back. And the Grizzlies, 14 back. And. Yeah, that was all over the place this week because I saw most of those. And then for the All-Stars, for the West front court, we got LeBron leading, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Nikola Jokic, Carmelo Anthony, Porzingis, Carl Anthony Towns, Ingram, and Dwight Howard for the front court of the West. For the West guards, Luka Doncic, who last time we talked about this was still in the lead, James Harden, Damian Lillard, and Alex Caruso, Huh? Okay. I'm gonna okay. let you take over. Russell Westbrook, Steph Curry, Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker, Andrew Lars, Russell, and John ja Morant for the West Guards. And for the front court of the East, Giannis, Siakam of Toronto, Joel Embiid, Jimmy Butler, Jason, Jason Tatum, Ugh. Taco Fall, Bam, Ed, Edip, uh, uh, Gordon Hayward. Dominant, yeah, I don't know half these. And Andre Drummond of Detroit, number 10, who is on the trade block as we talked about last week. Trey Young for the East Guards leads. Kyrie Irving, Kendall Walker, Derek Rose, Kyle Rowley, Zach Levine, Jalen Brown, Ben Simmons, Bradley Beal, and Fred Van Vliet rounds out the East Guards. And that's what we got for the All-Star game. 
how to put these back together. Uh oh. Alright. And that's all about the basketball this week. A little bit on the uh, on baseball. I'm just oh, baseball, the Astros? Yeah, the, the punishment was finally handed down for the Astros. Really? Yes. Really? I didn't even see it. I was trying to look for it all week. Really? Or as much of the punishment as we know has been handed down, as far as I'm aware. Our yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Alright, so, for, uh, for those of you that don't know, here's what we know at least. Here's how it all started. Uh, on October 16th, 2018, uh, the Houston Astros were facing off against the Boston Red Sox in Game 3 of the ALCS. Uh, <laughs> um, Astros, just, I don't know, someone in their organization, he's not listed as a certain position or you. position of power. Um, Kyle McLaughlin was removed from what we believe to be an empty camera well due to him aiming a cell phone at the Boston dugout. What? To, yeah, you know, I didn't see that. I saw the trash can. And the well, the trash, can, the trash can's different. Uh, oh, I haven't seen this one. Um, uh, to which Houston claimed they were in fear of the Red Sox cheating. Because, um, well, they did get caught cheating. So. Uh -huh. It's fair enough. However... There were many other reports to suggest that um, from over the last year prior. Uh, I can't read my own handwriting. Uh, that Houston was cheating, stating that Houston was cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, 2017, claims came out that the Astros were being were banging on trash cans to yes, communicate I stolen did signs. See this. Uh, using a camera in center field, so they uh, they had a camera in center field. I just read out about this yeah, today. With a toe, with a close up on the catcher there, so they could steal pitching signs. Signs came with the batter, and the certain amount of times they banged the trash can is the certain pitch they were doing. Yep. So, uh, similarly, uh, and this one is just even wilder to me. Uh, Boston was reported using a full replay room to decode signs. I, I saw they had the, the little monitor in the dogout. No, that's all complete, I saw. Complete replay room. Holy oh, crap. And that just kind of bewilders me. Yeah, that's crazy. So here's the consequences for the Astros, as far as I know so far. Uh, General Manager Jeff uh, Lunau, or Lunau, and uh, Manager AJ Hinch were both handed one year suspensions. Oh. And were subsequently fired from the Astros organization. Uh, as for Boston, they had fired their manager, Alex Cora, um, who Commissioner Bob Manfred's report claimed to be the genius behind the trash can idea when he was a member of the Astros organization. Right. Um, there was a big thing about um, the Mets and their manager, because he was listed in there as well. That's been sorted out. He's staying with the, uh, with the Mets. Yeah. So he got lucky at least. Uh -huh. Um, that's all I got for baseball. Oh, college football. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Fellas, I gotta eject, but thank you so much for having me. Oh, you no problem. problem. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. See we'll finish this up and then call up our uh, next guest, Steve. Sounds good to me. Yep. You really didn't <laughs> seem like you wanted to be no, here. No, really didn't. Anywho. Oh well. It's whatever. It's still going up. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, that, that, right. that's Mr. Adam Jackson. Yeah. Five Point Beds. Yeah. He really didn't say much, but he's on YouTube. He's like, uh, he goes over some random things. Like, I don't know. He, he likes to do a lot of list videos. Um, Top ten, whatever. Yeah, uh, worst stadiums ranked, uh, yep. you know, best players, stuff like that. If you want to, go check him out on YouTube at Five Point Beds. Yep. All right, college football. <laughs> that audio was really trashed. <laughs> I don't know why it was so messed There was up. an echo. Uh, all right, so this past Monday, LSU defeated Clemson uh, 42-25. We had some key stats for uh, for Clemson here. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Go Tigers. Uh, <laughs> he was 18 for 37, 234 yards, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this dude's name for Ooh. rushing here. Holy Toledo. Uh, that's, that's his first name. He... That's his I first thought I saw this guy. It 10? I don't know. Uh, 15 carries, 78 yards, 5.2 um, average yards 
yards per carry and one touchdown. Mm -hmm. Uh, for Clemson receiving, got Ross with uh, five receptions, 76 yards, 15.2 yards uh, per catch, zero touchdowns. You mean Moss? No, nope, Ross. There's a Moss and a Ross? Chief, I think you goofed. No, nope, Chief Google must have goofed. You went really unprofessional today. You know, we I, I, <laughs> hey, man. It's like, I swear, it was either Ross or, I didn't think there was a Ross. There might have been a Moss. J. Ross. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. <laughs> um, cool. Or Puffle. Whatever. Uh, five receptions, 76 yards, 15.2 uh, yards of reception, and zero touchdowns. Now, for LSU, who DBU completely smacked uh, Clemson, Joe Burrow, who we've previously mentioned, uh, 31 of 49. Should I pull it out? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, 463 yards, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, Edwards rushing, 16 carries, 110 yards, 6.9 yards a carry, zero touchdowns. And Chase for receiving, he had uh, nine receptions, 221 yards, 224.6. Uh... <laughs> the reason why I have it is because there's a signature. Right there, if you couldn't see, it's tiny. I know. I'm just putting it there because we're talking about Joe Burrow. Well, who's starting to turn it up? It's Joe Mixon. Yeah, you didn't say that. Oh, my bad. It's Joe Mixon, number 28. The guy I was wearing last episode yes. in overtime. Even though you are a uh, Bills fan. Yeah, I don't have a single jersey. <laughs> I'll show you the one I want to get. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Jay Chase, nine receptions, 221 yards, uh, 24.6 uh, yards of reception, and two touchdowns. That's your top stats from the college football National championship game. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to move on to wrestling. What time is it? Just go to wrestling. Oop, we're late, but that's whatever. <laughs> um, college wrestling. Or we can just do overtime. Yeah, right. we'll do overtime, whatever. Uh, we got team power rankings here. Um, we got the top ten college wrestling uh, teams uh, so far this season. And their records uh, might confuse you a little why they're – rank this in there. It's points based off of pins, decisions, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you don't get that, I don't care. It's wrestling, sorry. It's wrestling stuff, look it up. We have Iowa 6-0 and in the lead with uh, 350 points. Penn State 5-1, and 31 points back. Virginia Tech 6-0, uh, 34 points back. Ohio State 5-1, 45 points back. North Carolina State 8-0, 51 points back. Uh, Arizona State 8-1, 72 points back. Nebraska, 5-1, and one, 84 points back. Wisconsin, 82, 92 points back. Oklahoma State, 5-1, and one, 105 points back. And wrapping up the top 10, we have Pitt, 5-1, uh, 141 points back. Big shit, Pitt. <laughs> and part of the reason this looks a little different than some of the past years where we've had Cornell, Minnesota, Penn State what? up top, Ohio State up top. Yeah, I'm really surprised Penn State's not on top. What's going on with them? Uh, well, actually, it's because, like, Bo Nickel and all them. Right, right. Bo Nickel's at the Olympics. Yeah, they're, they four, they four went this year for the Olympics. Yep. That's, so that's the matter. I, well, I saw a video on Instagram. It was like, Kyle Snyder wins something yep. over Bo Nickel. And I'm like, what? All right. Um, that's all we got until uh, till our next guest uh, shows up. So we will... Call yeah, I'm gonna give you his number. We will come back to you shortly. Sure, I, oh, we can't really send him a message. Yeah, I can send him an email, but it's that's stupid. Yeah, that's dumb. Oh, I am so dumb. Overtime. I have just realized that I can combine episodes. Okay, then we can do that. Cool. No, I could just set it like this instead of going through a headache of like posting. Oh no! Oh, man, cool. I am oh, cool. so dumb. That's cool. I don't. I don't care. It's cool. All right, ready. Yep. Where, what's his number? Sorry, this is way unprofessional. We probably should have stopped. But... <laughs> Who cares? Bloopers. Oh. Bloopers. No bloopers this time. Do you want to put it up? Alright. Seven to four. I get the two. I'll take this one. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Yeah, I'm, I have another story for later for overtime. So, if we'd like to do that. It's fine. Hello? Hello, that's Bob. Can I help you? Yeah, hi. Um, uh, this sports is, commute? Yeah, this is Dan Preston from the Sports Commute. Hello? Hello? 
Hey, Bob. Oh, oh, hold on. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Hang on. Uh, can you hear us now? This Bob. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Could you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, I'm Dan. I'm from the Sports Commute. We had emailed earlier. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm doing good. All right, uh, we're just about set to start our uh, our episode segment with you, if you're ready. Okay, let's right. do it. Sit down. All right. Um, I'm joined with um, with our other host here, Matt. Hello. So, uh, he's, hello. Gonna be hanging around right. too. All right, cool. that's set to anchor. Save tools. Record. Let's do this. All right. Cool. Cool. All right, Welcome back. We are with our uh, we are with our next guest, uh, Mr. Bob Pockers, uh, NASCAR analyst. Of course, as soon as we record, the audio goes like garbage. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna delete that bit. <laughs> Alright, you still there? Hey, Bob, hey, Bob, I'm sorry, I lost you. Oh, yeah, no worries, no worries. It's funny, we just started recording when it happened. All right, welcome back to the sports community. We are with our second guest of the evening, uh, Mr. Bob Pockers, an NASCAR analyst. And uh, take a seat, Joe. You're late. Uh, you, you missed all the good sports stuff. We'll have overtime later <laughs> after this segment. All right, so uh, we'll start out with uh, you're at the Chili Bowl right now down in um, Texas, right? Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Close. Close enough, man. Thank you, Bob. I thought it was in Texas. <laughs> That's whatever. Everything's big in Texas. Huh? Whatever. Um, it's the uh, 34th running of the Chili Bowl. Um, so far as we know, uh, Christopher Bell has advanced to Saturday's feature. Oh, what's his name? Did too. Uh, Rico. Yeah, Rico. I got. I got all the okay, names. Yeah, okay, okay. The guys that have won their features okay, at least. Okay. Uh, where he will race against Cannon McIntosh, Kyle Larson, and Rico Abreu. That's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, tonight will be the final prelim race, which I believe is happening right now, actually. Is it? Uh, featuring Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Justin Allgaier, at least in the NASCAR sign. Damn, would you like a piece of these? Yeah, sure. Um, so what are you seeing down there? How do you like the race down there? Uh, well, you know, look, there's over 300 uh, drivers here. And I often describe it as kind of your family game night, except with race cars. Because everybody's here to kind of have a good time, but they're also very competitive. They all want bragging rights. And Christopher Bell has won the last three times, and that's really ticked off Kyle Larson and Rico Avery. So <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're chopping at the bit and trying to uh, and throw off Christopher. Christopher's running for a new team this year, and, uh, and Christopher's really, really, really confident. So, yeah, he's looking like he's Absolutely. coming out hot. I didn't really see much from that. I just realized, I just looked at the NASCAR. Yeah. App. Oh, I got I got all the motorsports sports here. Oh, you do? Yeah. Uh, well, that's all I got for the Chili Bowl right now. So um, we'll just have to see what happens Saturday. And uh, is that the final? That the Saturday's the uh, the feature event. So you know, dirt track racing is always fun. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially when you got some high competitive guys. Absolutely. So for me, like Kyle Larson, like wow. Mm -hmm. All right, um, move on to F one real quick. Uh, yeah, I know I covered a lot. Of wow. the, I covered a lot of the motorsports this week. Holy crap! Um, Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton um, is not leaving Mercedes, uh, as originally reported. He's staying with Mercedes um, and is facing a contract extension for the next three years uh, over. Yeah, three years, forty-five uh, million euro. Um, a year or for through the three years? For the three years. Um, you know, so he's had a great career so far. I believe he's six, uh, six-time F one champion. I, I believe so. Yeah. Um, working on the seventh now, so we'll see what happens. Give me Johnson. <laughs> uh, 
What? IndyCar driver Fernando Alonso um, has spoke about reevaluating a return with uh, with F1 racing this year. However, um, you know uh, he's gonna wait until uh, after his last attempt in the Indy 500. Right. So okay. you know he's gonna stick with IndyCar racing until about uh, what is it Memorial Day? It's Memorial yeah, now Day. it's Memorial Day yeah. since it's they always moved Memorial Day. Day to, uh, Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. Around. Uh, so he'll stick with that, and then we'll see what happens. Maybe he comes back in. Um, who was he with? Was it one Toro Rosso? Uh, whatever. He was. He was one of the orange ones. <laughs> I I, uh, I don't remember F one very much. Uh, all right, and now we'll move on to NASCAR because that's what Matt's got. And yeah. Um, you want to start? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, why not? Let's just start. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> with some story time. Uh, since I've done that for the past three weeks. Daryl Earnhardt Jr. Shut the hell up. <laughs> this has nothing to do with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, so this is the 1969 Talladega 500, which is, by what I've heard, is the worst race ever. One of the worst. It was uh, one of the worst. It was horribly set up. Like I've said before. Shut up. No, I'm going to stop you. Like okay, I've said yeah. before, we don't have all the information. We have if you want more information, go check out Black Flags Matter video. Yes. Yeah. So... At this race, the Professional Drivers Association, the PDA, which is not around now because they folded and everything, they boycotted the race due to many issues, including tire failures. Because of what? Tire failures, I believe, yeah. that I know of. And uh, it was led by Richard Petty, both Allisons, Kelly Yarbrough, Buddy Baker, Tiny Lund, Ramo Scott, Stott, and nine other drivers that I know of. And uh, I know Firestone withdrew from the race. We did talk about the tire wars last week. Yep. And Firestone well, was all... Firestone withdrew from the race because they couldn't find a compound that would hold up for longer than four laps. <laughs> it's true. True that. This race really shouldn't have happened. Uh, uh, it really shouldn't have. That's where Richard Childress got to start, right? Yeah. I believe so. Uh, big big day where he was able to race that race and, uh, and go from there. Uh-huh. And then I got the uh, Bill France really just wanted it to work. And surprising fun fact that he offered fans 1970 Daytona 500 tickets just to buy tickets to the race, mm -hmm. which is something I really never knew. And it was also the debut, the debut for the new Dodge Charger. And uh, Bobby Isaac won the pole. Richard Brickhouse won. And I, oh, that's that's well, the hold on, shut up. Ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. Second place, Jim Vandiver argued that he lapped Richard. Okay, great. It's also 1969, so... It, well, even the radio had him as the winner. Yeah. And he should have been the winner. The main reason why they believe Richard won the race is because he was running the brand new Charger, and Jim was running the old one. Mm -hmm. So... And it would kind of look bad if, if the old Charger beat out the new one. Uh, but... right. Such is life. Um, yeah, yeah. Now we'll go on to some more modern stuff. Um, we got a new I'm rule change. I didn't cover that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got a new rule change this year for uh, for 14 out of the uh, 36 races. Um, it should. It's a hope for NASCAR to return short track racing to um, to the way it was about three years ago, 2017 ish. Yeah. Uh, where it will shrink its um, spoiler from the ridiculously large eight inches down to uh two and three quarters of an inch oh wow i did not see that the front splitter will now um be shrunk from extending out two inches to actually just a quarter inch Hold on. so i should hopefully bring it back a little bit more excitement in the racing a little more challenges and all that stuff instead of just yeah you know in martinsville they all get single file yeah. for 200 laps my cat's about throw you like yeah <laughs> um so that will be used yeah, for... Yeah, I think the goal is that Brad Keselowski doesn't lead uh, 400 something laps. <laughs> Until Kyle Busch decides to show up. <laughs> um, so yeah, it'll be used at 14 out of the 36 races, all all the short tracks, and the three the three road courses. The Royal Bowl, really? Sonoma, the and the... Watkins Glen. Really? I didn't know. Huh. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think of what else I got. I just okay. have some... Way too early predictions. The <laughs> season's about a month away. Actually, uh, yeah, a little bit of a month away. 
And uh, I have some pretty prick, uh, predictions. So what I got for the final four, Harvick, Truex, Logano, and Hamlin. I'll ask your opinion after. Chase Elliott barely makes, almost makes it in the four. Mm -hmm. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney slides in like he did last year. Then I got Kyle Larson, Alex, Bo Alex Bowman, that Jones boy, Jimmy Johnson. I put Jimmy Johnson in there. In the chase? In the chase. I think he could do In the game. round of 12. But he gets shot. Cut short. Mm -hmm. William Byron, Clint Boyer, Austin Dill. Shut up. <laughs> and I have a very, I got a bold prediction. Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest. And the number 47. Mm -hmm. And that's who 37. I... Mm. Oh, 37? Okay. I wasn't sure which was. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, Ricky's running the forty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I mean, that's a that's a bold prediction. They could have someone, you know. It's always uh, there's anybody. Can there's slide the two in. wild, uh, three wild cards actually, because I don't think Daytona's in the playoffs for the second time. You got Daytona twice, Talladega once before the playoffs. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Talladega. Talladega. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, uh, anything oh, could oh, happen. Oh. You never know. Uh, is that now? Is that Ty Dillon or Austin Dillon you got in there? Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. I could see him winning another race or even squeaking by on points. There is one name I'm no... Oh, wait, never mind. What? Boyer. I was looking for Boyer right there. Okay. Yeah, so I like your list. Um, What's your opinion? I'm going to switch out Hamlin. See, I don't like Hamlin. Brad. Like, ah, I don't know. I can't I'm gonna say I'm going to say Brad is going to make it to the Final Four this year. Really? Yeah, I'd say he's got a good chance. He's had such a rough time getting past that round of eight. Yeah, but he's he's got a new group chief, uh, new pit, new pit crew, so we'll see what happens. Uh, who knows? This this is way too early. This this race is in this chase starts in September, and I'm talking about in January. Yeah, it's a long time coming. So long time. Never know what's gonna happen. It's always the same thing last year, <laughs> and I don't no clue for right. It's just got to start with uh, with Daytona. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot about the Rolex 24. Ah, there you go. So, let's pull up the news on the Rolex 24. Mm -hmm. Last week, we uh, we went up over about the uh, notable drivers and... Rowdy. And Rowdy and, and Allmendinger. Uh, Alright, let's see. What do we got? Absolutely new. nothing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Perfect. I, I haven't seen much. Uh... Well, there was qualifying, but I'm not going to click on it because it's going to shut the recording off. Huh. <laughs> well, let's Google it. All right. What do we got first? Oh, there's like, isn't there three different races on all of There's four different uh, sections of That's cars. That's what I'm at. And it would appear that... They do not Absolutely have, nothing. Uh, it appears they do not have the results. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, there's four, four different divisions, and they're all running at the same time. And the interesting thing is Kyle Busch will be one of the slower divisions. So oh, wow. So you have to feel what it's like to uh, slow. be passed by faster cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? Running a 2018 car, 2017. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I mean... He is a skilled driver with a hot head, so... Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I think he's going to have his problems with. I don't know. Uh, Almondinger's always a good one to, to root for. He's like, been doing it for the last couple of years. Wasn't it? Yeah. Gordon? I think he was a winner, yeah. He might have been. Yeah. I, I think know he Gordon won. won it. Gordon's won it. Uh, you got um, Haley Deegan's down there testing out the Ford prototype. Um, I deleted all the list of everyone that I had was down there, so I have no oh, idea. that's what I forgot. Huh. So earlier this week, I was on Twitter scrolling, and I found this. If you'd like, so Brian Keselowski, brother of Brad Keselowski. So I just I, I don't know who I found this from. He's like, this is the stupidest tweet ever. Brian Keselowski, I never even heard of him. So this is exactly what he says. Ready? So I don't. Oh, this is one. I don't know where he came this from, but he said, What facts, dumbass? I play Madden, but it doesn't make me a coach or a football player. You idiots think you are on the same level as real racer racers. I think this was about iRacing or something. And it's a mental disorder. 
that you think you're on the, yeah, that. And then it says, no different than kids shooting you school because they play shooting games. I, you people need I don't, help. I don't think that's him. Oh, well, I thought there was, it was. There was one, there was one, well, I, there were some tweets that were a little bit controversial that was from him, but then there's one, some that aren't. You have to check and make sure, check the one, see if it came from the one that has, uh, you know, a few thousand followers. It and might not have, the one that just has like 12, because. I the fake one yeah, you gotta pull it on one instead of an L. Yeah. It looks really real. It looks really uh, real. Okay, hold on, let me check. Yeah, there are a few fake accounts that people try to really pass off. That that is him. That is sure? from him. You gotta find the tweet. Well, okay. Um, where it go now? Of course it's gone. You probably deleted it. Well, it's gone now. <laughs> yeah, well, it's gone. I don't know if. <clears throat> so he probably was smart enough to delete it. Uh, if it was him. If it was him or whoever said it. Yeah. Let's see what else. Anything else? Um, oh, we got a little fun story out of, uh, out of, um, IMSA again. Uh, Back in 1992, little funny story. Um, we had a <laughs> we had a softball game uh, between drivers from Insa and the Bush Series um, uh, at Watkins Glen. Who, well, both raced at Watkins Glen in the sixth inning. No way. Here, uh, we have a video here from NASCAR man. Uh, in the sixth inning here, Joe Nemechek came through with a big RBI infield single <laughs> Where was that this? ended <laughs> that ended the game when Ken, when Ken Wallace hit a fly ball to Kenny Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, it's just a little. I like NASCAR. Man. I, I just recently followed him, and I just heard he was he was crazy with the stuff he says. Or with the. It's probably a good thing they were racing cars for a living, not playing softball. <laughs> Oh, we got a little sad, sad story from Noah Gregson. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> he's down in uh, in Tulsa as well, and uh, you know he's had he's had a little trouble with his Noah hotel room. Gregs. Oh. Like uh, like his shower doesn't have a shower uh, shower curtain. Shower curtain. So he's having the struggles down there. Uh, that's tough. <laughs> it's well, real tough. Since we got time. Yeah. I was gonna do this last or next episode, but I might as well do it now. Did you know Bill Elliott and Dan Marino owned a team? Wait, what? They owned a NASCAR team. Bill Elliott and Dan Marino. Yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Elliott Marino said motorsports. <laughs> Elliott Marino racing. It was a one-year thing. Motorsports. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't remember. It was either motorsports or just yeah. racing. But they owned the number 13 team. It was, of course, Dan Marino. And I forgot who was driven by. They had it on somewhere. Dan Marino. Was it Jerry Nadeau? No? I believe it was Nadeau. Yeah, it was Nadeau. It, yeah. it was Nadu, and he drove it for half the year, and it was sponsored by Life Support or something. <laughs> I some company like that, and uh, they just had struggles with it, and I believe they had sponsorship issues, and they just closed it down without just anything. They just that's it, gone mm -hmm. uh, after one year. And that's that's my little short story mm -hmm. that I had. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think, kind of going through my notes here. AKA Twitter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. You got it, you got it. What? What was on his account for? Because he also does NASCAR. Oh, cool. Never mind. <laughs> Go to NASCAR, man, or just find a story. That's why I follow him because he got some really good story. Oh, his pictures. Um. Well, you know, I do have something about uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. that I. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Joe. Uh, so Dale Jr. Uh, now has a new show where he's going to explore the remains of some closed down and abandoned tracks. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, I think NASCAR uh, put out on the their orange, Twitter and orange Facebook road or whatever it's called. He's basically just going to go around the country looking for the lost tracks. Um, I don't remember the name of the last one, but I think he's going to look for, like, uh, Greenville, um, <laughs> was it the airport speedway? Yeah, oh, I did see the something on the airport speedway. Airbase speedway? Yep. Um, stuff like that. That'll be 
fun to see just because Dale Jr. is always an interesting character. <laughs> Uh huh. Um. Yeah, I think that's uh. That's what I got. I think that's about it. So um, you know. Uh, you got anything else for us, uh, Mr. Pockers? Uh, just you know, it's gonna be a good. Uh, looking for a Daytona 500 coming oh. up, and gosh, what four weeks? Yeah. It's so close. I think a little less uh, than that. Yeah. And uh, it's gonna be um. Gonna be interesting, uh, interesting season. Uh, I think you know uh, all these, every, everybody's those who are in Tulsa are getting you know we're on the NASCAR side or getting them anxious to race and they'll get a little bit of cobwebs off here and then uh, and then be ready to go in the stock cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so. we uh, we hope you have fun down in Tulsa and uh, all right. yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. yeah. Right. See ya. I love how I just came on to eat. I know. Well, don't worry. We'll do, we'll do overtime. We have overtime, so. I might actually pull up another story. Doing it overtime. Yeah. Talking more about random stuff that we actually. Like, research. research. I did a little. We kind, of, we kind of bumbled our way through five point vids. So yeah. Was, he didn't talk much. That was the talk. Oh, he didn't really talk much? No, no he didn't. All right, you just <laughs> find a story and you probably find a story. I, I knew we had to leave early, too, and he was just kind of like, oh, He was boys. like, I don't want to. Boys, I got a dip. You guys talk about, um. Uh, OBJ and oh, yeah, I, I, I did. I pulled that. I pulled that up. Yeah. yeah, and I gave the information. I completely forgot about the AV thing. I was gonna mm -hmm. talk about. Talk about Edelman too. I did. Edelman. I pulled that up too. I forgot about the AV thing. Ah, uh, AV. AV was oh, had a video of him saying crap to his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend. Talking about OBJ, but I said OBJ and Ed Are you Edelman. Good? No, we have a little more. Why? But we got time now. Oh, so funny. Yeah, I figured out.